Hey everyone, welcome to My Wife the Dietitian, a weekly podcast about lifestyle and healthy eating. I'm Rob, and together with my wife, Sandra, we invite you to join us on this informative yet entertaining journey through the complex world of healthy eating. We'll cover everything but the kitchen sink. Each week, we'll discuss topics ranging from how to protect yourself from developing cancer, spicy foods to rev up the libido, to caring for your palliative grandfather with Alzheimer's. We'll also delve into more complex issues like, what the heck is oat milk? Why doesn't my butt fit into these jeans? And every guy's favorite question, will eating spinach really make it bigger? Join us each week as we strive to educate, enlighten, and entertain you. Running short on time and don't have a plan for dinner? The drive through is always open and the burgers and fries will satisfy your hunger. Fast food, ultra processed and packaged products, along with soft drinks, deep fried greasy foods and sweets can all lead to fanning that inflammatory state. Five million Canadians live with a condition that's complicated by chronic inflammation. There's a recent trend towards healthy eating. Anti-inflammatory diet is a popular buzzword that's growing in popularity. Research is demonstrating that eating whole foods, more plant-focused, can help offer a diet with protective elements when living with chronic disease characterized by inflammation. Minimally processed whole foods from Mother Nature's bounty provide important components such as antioxidants, omega-3 fatty acids, and polyphenols that have an anti-inflammatory effect in the body. Hi, Sandra. Hi, Rob. Welcome back to My Wife the Dietitian. Oh, <laughs> me. Yeah, here, here you are. <laughs> awesome. On, 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 all about you. Episode 19 today. Wow. It's not all about me. It's all about the listeners. Well, it's, it's for the listeners. Yes. From you and I. That's right. Yeah. So what are we talking about today? It's a hot topic. A hot topic? Yeah. Sexy foods? No, no. <laughs> Cooling the flames of inflammation with food, the anti-inflammatory diet. Oh, that. Uh, I've heard that word or that term thrown around so much, and I've never really understood what it means. It paints an interesting image in your head, and I'm curious to hear sort of more about it. So it's a well, good thing I'm here today listening. Yeah, I, good. I'm glad you said that because um, it it is definitely a buzzword. We hear about it like a lot lately, and uh, we want to first talk about like inflammation and what is it and why it matters, and we're going to talk about what an anti-inflammatory diet is like with key elements there's four key elements okay yeah so let's let's just start by talking about what what it is what that term means and go from there sure okay well what okay what is inflammation so when you think of inflammation what when i think of inflammation <laughs> i think of maybe i'm getting it mixed up with like inflation like i think of getting big and like someone like the michelin man that's what i picture when i think of this word but i i'm mixed. you don't think of like flames and no hot. I, i've never thought of that which is funny because the word flame is kind of right in the middle of it but no i don't know i don't i i, I think i just figured it out i've always been thinking inflation and i'm all like i'm it's like the anti-inflated like <laughs> that's so funny uh, yes. i i always think of like infection and inflammation is like kind of similar okay so like if there's an infection it's like the it's inflamed like you cut your finger and turns all red and yeah 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 and that's your body getting into battle and it's fighting like a defense this. mechanism yeah that your body has it's a good thing it's uh it it helps heal right and okay so yeah with the, <laughs> um so basically there's acute inflammation and chronic inflammation Okay. Chronic doesn't sound fun. No, I know. And that's usually what, uh, when you hear anti-inflammatory diet, it's regarding people living with chronic inflammation. Right. So acute is like what I said about like cutting your finger yeah. and you get uh, infected and it's inflamed and it's all hot and red and, or a toothache, but your body heals because your immune system helps with the white blood cells to help heal the cut the wound right yeah 
Yeah. So that's uh, that's acute, but that heals, and it, you know, then you live your life, and life goes on. And but chronic is uh, inflammation that can last months or years or a lifetime. Wow. And then it causes damage to your arteries and organs and body systems. Right. And once again, we're learning that what you put in your body is going to have an impact all the way through your body and everything you eat has an impact on you somewhere somehow yeah yeah because like so why it matters the inflammation is 60 percent of north americans have a chronic condition that's either caused by or complicated by inflammation wow yeah or five million canadians live with chronic inflammation Wow. So it can be a condition or a disease. So chronic inflammation is caused by the immune system spinning out of control. Also having too much body fat in around the liver and other organs. So the visceral or abdominal fat can affect how your immune system works. Oh, okay. Yeah, that makes sense. And the chronic inflammation is linked to, I, me I mentioned that 60% of North Americans or 5 million Canadians have a chronic condition or disease. And this is linked to um, type 2 diabetes is one that can have a link with inflammation, heart disease, dementia, asthma, and many types of cancer. Like those things lead to inflammation or I mean, inflammation leads to those things? Uh, they or are, they're a symptom of those things? Yes. Yes. You could have those diseases and have inflammation happening. Um, IBD, so Crohn's or colitis can also be inflammatory. Like it's, you know, you're having inflammation in your bowels. Okay. Many types of cancer, osteoporosis, rheumatoid arthritis. So anything that you have joint pain or you have, you know, inflammation in your joints, autoimmune diseases, like across the board, all of them um, are a result of your immune system spinning out of control and your body is attacking itself and it, causing damage to the arteries and the organs and other body systems. And a lot of people may not even know it uh, because this can be affected by your diet, your sleep, your activity level, and stress. All the major things we usually are talking about. The lifestyle. It's yeah. a lifestyle disease and lifestyle problem. And um, the thing with an anti-inflammatory diet, there is no actual definition of what that is. Like it's, there's no standard definition of anti-inflammatory diet, but there's anti-inflammatory foods. Okay. So there's key elements and we're going to discuss four key elements of anti-inflammatory kind of living or uh, living like eating foods that have an anti-inflammatory effect. Okay. Sounds good. That's, I think what most people want to know, right? Yeah. Yeah. So I think in, the, in previous episodes, like the sleep one, we talked about the C-reactive protein, which is a protein in the blood that they can measure and it's a marker of inflammation. Oh, really? Okay. Yeah. Yeah. So people that have high levels of C-reactive protein could be more prone to inf infl inflammation. Yeah. Or they have inflammation happening inside right. them. Yeah. Is that an, a, a normal part of a blood test or is that an extra? No, it's not normal. It's a uh, it's something that the doctor would just tick off as yeah. to, like looking I, at. I'm just thinking if I've ever been tested for that. I don't remember seeing that on any blood tests. So yeah, it must be an extra mm. box they tick. Mm -hmm. Yeah. There are pro-inflammatory foods. Okay. Do they eliminate inflammation or do they prevent it? Sorry, pro-inflammatory actually make it worse. So we're going to first talk about right. the, the foods oh, that are actually making it worse. And then we're going to talk about the key elements of an anti-inflammatory diet. Okay. My bad. I'm usually pretty good with the grammar and the words, but uh, <clears throat> yeah, pro sounded like a good thing. But in this case, it isn't a good thing. Right. So it's a pro heat, like pro inflammatory, yeah. like your infection and infection yeah. and, and, you know, inflammatory. And so um, basically foods that actually can contribute to that inflammatory state. Right. That makes sense. And if you think about what I said were some of the conditions and disease, uh, diabetes, heart disease, some cancer, IBD, can you kind of start to form an idea of what foods might actually make that inflammatory state worse? Like if you think diabetes. Sugar. Right. Yes. That's like 
the number one. Fat and sugar. Yeah, yeah, exactly. So currently the standard typical North American diet that is highly processed foods, overly processed uh, fast foods, packaged, you know, foods that are uh, not the traditional diet. Right. Not your fresh produce and those sorts of things. Or the whole foods. Well, that's what, I, yeah, that's what I'm looking for. <laughs> what a loss for words today. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, simple refined sugars is a pro-inflammatory food. Uh, so foods that have high glycemic index that makes your blood sugar spike, things like the pop, the candy, the donuts, um, other bakery items, juice, white sugar, syrups, like all those kind of foods that are going to send your, your system into a bit of a frenzy, frenzy yeah. and contribute to the inflammation. The next one, you said fats. So yeah, the unhealthy fats, so trans fats, again, ultra processed foods that have trans fats, I think they're starting to become uh outlawed <laughs> they're not uh, food manufacturers cannot be make using trans fats as much anymore okay they used to be in crackers and chips and baked goods certain vegetable oils that are high in the omega-6 can be pro-inflammatory so not so good yeah like corn oil soybean oil cotton seed sometimes peanut oils and then do you remember we've talked about before bologna sausage processed meats Pepperoni. What, they're, they're not good for you? <laughs> they can contribute to inflammation. The, and bo the bologna with like the little pieces of, of whatever it is, ma macaroni loaf. <laughs> that, oh, that's, that like that super sounds healthy. like the 70s. <laughs> yeah, right? <laughs> right. That's crazy stuff. Um, yeah, and then deep fried greasy foods. So, you know, you think of uh, the deep fryer that's, you know, the French fries and the... It, you think of going through the drive through and getting a quick meal. Um, a lot of that's uh, made with the deep fryer. Yeah, you know what's interesting is when it, when it comes on your plate, you're like, oh, that's good. Like, it, it does taste good. Oh, yeah. If you go back in the kitchen and look at how it's made, you'd be like, what? I know. You just, like, threw that whatever it was in a big vat of grease and, like, oh. just let it sizzle in there for a while. And you pulled it out and threw it on my plate. Yeah, and you can actually and think of that. me money for it. Exactly. I had to pay you to eat that garbage. That's so <laughs> that funny. Garbage. People well, are yeah, funny. They, they can like fry anything, right? Like deep fry anything. And you think of like how that food reacts in that oil, how it's just like screaming. Well, and that's what's happening in your arteries and your body when you're having too much of the pro-inflammatory foods. Right, right. So the deep fried greasy foods, the simple refined sugary foods, uh, highly processed, the trans fats, and the a lot of saturated fats too. Like if you overdo the animal fats and the highly saturated fat, fatty foods. Question for you. Can you explain the different fats? Like there's saturated, unsaturated, trans fats. Another episode? Okay. There's no easy answer, clearly, I guess. Eh? That'd be a no. Okay. Another episode. That's fine. Saturated fats come from animals. Okay. And unsaturated fats come from plant foods. But there are some polyunsaturated fats. They're high in omega-6 fatty acids. So the corn oil, the soybean oil, the cottonseed, the peanut oils, those could be pro-inflammatory. So they actually increase your inflammation in your body whereas the omega-3 fats from fish like wild fish and flax seeds and olive oil and avocado and hemp and chia and flax seeds those those are the good ones those are the omega-3 so they are anti-inflammatory but we're jumping ahead here okay sorry i just i've never really understood like and when you look at the f fat on the label it's just like this list underneath and i'm like well which one's good and maybe yeah, we'll just have to talk about that again in more detail. But yeah, and it's it a balance, be. right? Like you, you, the trans, you don't want any. Um, the omega six and omega three, the balance is off. So we need to have more omega three and less omega six. And those are polyunsaturated fats. The omega three is monounsaturated fats, and then saturated fats come from animals. So they're solid at room temperature. So if you think of butter. Yeah, butter or chicken fat, it just solidifies in the, but the olive oil is out in room temperature and it's, it's liquid. Right. So that's what happens in the body. Yeah. I think this is one of those things Well, the more we talk about it, the more it'll sink in. So I'll probably ask you a few times to explain it, not in this episode, but it's just, uh, 
kind of complicated. Anyway, let's carry on. In addition to simple refined sugars and unhealthy fats, also charred foods, so burnt foods in large amounts are actually contribute to the inflammatory state. So they've been charred on the barbecue or in the campfire and they're inflamed when we eat them. It's not good for our system. Really? Because Mm -hmm. of the condition that they're in, like their charred condition creates a reaction in our in our system that yeah remember we talked about free radicals and like the car the rusty car and you need antioxidants to help reduce like combat them yeah yeah so that's the same like the charred foods have um heterocyclamines oh that word yeah it was on the tip of my tongue it's gonna help you out there but so when the grease hits the flame and it causes the on your um steak Uh, that black, that's going to be something that if you eat it all the time, that could contribute to inflammation. Right. Gotcha. So the other thing when we're looking at where our meat and our dairy come from, so it really depends what the animal was fed. It really affects the meat. If you eat meat or chicken or dairy, like you drink milk or have cheese, you want to know where that is coming from. Where, where, what it was eating, you mean? Yeah. Which is partly where it's coming from. Yeah. Are they corn fed or grass fed? Yeah. Are they running around in a big field and happy and singing? Or are they like locked in a coop all day long with like a little cubicle? Yeah. Or yeah. In a little, in a industrialized farm where it's like a shoe box and they can't even turn around. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. The, if they have corn, like if they're corn fed, their body and their meat is going to be different than if they're grass fed. Right, which is better. Grass-fed. That's what I figured, yeah. And it'll usually say that on the label because they want to promote that, right? Grass-fed beef or grass-fed whatever it is. Not fish, I guess. Fish don't, <laughs> fish don't, <laughs> fish don't eat grass. Seaweed-fed. <laughs> Local right. seaweed-fed fish. Wild fish, though. Not They're not as wild. much the <laughs> farmed fish. These fish are wild. The, you know, if you eat the farmed fish fish it might not have as good like the um, omega-3s aren't as good or they don't have the omega-3s right excessive alcohol uh, and that's a bad thing <laughs> <laughs> or is that a question is that a yes no question is it that time of day already <laughs> or is that why you're at a loss for words today too much excessive alcohol <laughs> that means tea right now uh-huh. <laughs> it's not happy hour in our world yet almost and it wouldn't be excessive. Anyways, excessive alcohol it contributes to the inflammatory state. Uh, that's, yeah. Basically, all the things that you think taste good or, uh, yeah, you enjoy are probably bad for you. Not necessarily. I, know, I don't like it when people say that because I don't agree. I, no, I, I, you're right. I, that's a total uh, stereotype. It's just like there's so many foods that are amazing that are good for you and taste good. But I think when people think, oh, like things that I can't eat are all the good foods like pizza and deep fried things. But there's lots of other stuff that's good. So the last thing that's a food or processed food that contributes to the inflammatory state is, uh, as I said, processed food with artificial sweeteners or additives, possibly carrageenan. Those things can be pro-inflammatory. Okay. If they're added, part of the processed food Mm -hmm. stuff. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. Now, um, remember I said there's no standard definition of inflammatory, like an anti-inflammatory diet. Yep. So anti-inflammatory food that we're going to discuss If you eat more of those more often um, and eat less of the pro-inflammatory foods, that will help with the problem that you're experiencing with your chronic inflammation. Okay. So now we'll go into the four key elements of the anti-inflammatory diet. And I'm putting it in quotes because it's not, there isn't 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 a a standard one. Yeah. It's just foods to eat if you want to reduce inflammation. Yeah, and you know what actually the theme is? It's more like the traditional way of eating, traditional diet and lifestyle. And it's, you think of all the different cultures that, uh, remember we've talked about Mediterranean diet. Mm -hmm. Um, You can look at different cuisines around the world and and the traditional diet and lifestyle. Um, The people in the Mediterranean area, there's also Okinawa. It's a Japanese island 
famous for people who live into their hundreds in good health. Oh, wow. And the local diet is a big reason in their traditional uh, way of eating and lifestyle. Probably not a lot of McDonald's over there. I'm not sure. <laughs> yeah, not, li- not likely. <laughs> also, the Nordic diet, the traditional Nordic diet, uh, Denmark, Sweden, Finland, also um, have elements that are anti-inflammatory. I don't even know what that means, like the, what their diet is over there. Well, um, we're going to talk about that when we talk about the key elements. Okay. Also Mexican, the traditional Mexican diet and lifestyle fits into this anti-inflammatory way of eating. You don't mean tacos and burritos, I'm sure. You're meaning like rice and beans and fish and that sort of thing, I bet. Just to clarify, Taco Bell doesn't count. Yeah, yeah. So with those uh, traditional diet and lifestyles, the key elements are whole foods, number one. Number two, plant-based proteins. Okay, plant-based proteins, yep. Number three, omega-3 fats, fatty acids. So we sort of talked about that before. That's your avocados, olive oil. What else is on that? Seeds, the uh, hemp parts. Oh, yeah, nuts and seeds and all those. Seeds and flax seeds. Right, okay. And the fourth one is fiber. Fiber. Whole grains, lots of produce, fruits and veggies, right? So the key elements of an anti-inflammatory diet are whole foods plant-based proteins, omega-3 fatty acids, and fiber. And we'll go into them in detail. Okay. Well, that's giver. Okay. So the whole foods, including vegetables and fruits and herbs and spices. So with the vegetables, they're rich in um, vitamin C, like the berries and citrus and cruciferous vegetables. Right. Vitamin E and beta carotene. You think of the orange, like sweet potato, carrots, orange peppers. So whole foods with vegetables, fruits. They also have lots of fiber, soluble and insoluble. We talked about that last week. Right. Um, They have those bright colors. So they have the polyphenols and antioxidants, and those help reduce that C-reactive protein that we talked about that is a marker of inflammation. Okay, so So, bright bright colors. Yeah, the bright colors of the vegetables and fruits. That's why there was a campaign about have five different colors a day of vegetables and fruits, not Skittles and uh, (laughs) donut sprinkles. (laughs) It's like... Those don't count. (laughs) <laughs> you think of your salad that has red peppers and cucumbers and broccoli and lettuce, like the leafy greens and the um, carrots. So you've got all those different colors and that will help with reducing your inflammation. Good to know. Because mm-hmm. of the antioxidants in those vegetables and the polyphenols in the skins of the fruits and vegetables. And herbs are wonderful too because uh, herbs like mostly are green leafy. If we think of a lot of the herbs, especially fresh herbs. Fresh, yeah. But also um, they've done some research on some spices like ginger is anti-inflammatory. And not Marianne. I know you were going to say that. No, I wasn't. Where's actually. Marianne? You always say that's, that when we talk about ginger. That's Marianne. an overused you know, joke now. But <laughs> King Gill- Gill- Gilligan's Island, right? Yeah. Uh, is ginger considered? It's not considered a herb, though, is it? Spice. A spice, I guess. Yeah. 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 And uh, turmeric is the other one. It's a big one that uh, they've really started looking at. And turmeric is the plant. It's a bulb like the ginger. Right. And curcumin is the actual chemical that is anti-inflammatory okay and it brings down that c reactive protein that uh, we talked about that that, you know affects your joint pain and arthritis and with the turmeric you need to have it's a fat soluble uh, spice so you it you have to have some fat so if you have it in curry for instance you're going to get a little bit of fat that helps your body absorb oh, I see. the curcumin. And then also black pepper. Uh, there's an element in black pepper called piperine. Piperine. P-I-P-E-R-I-N-E. P- yeah, piperine, piperine. And it increases the bioavailability or effectiveness of the turmeric. Well, and it, and it also helps increase the enzymes in the liver to help your body detoxify the blood. Good stuff. So the next one, plant-based proteins. Uh, what do you think would be a plant-based protein? Um, tofu is the first thing I think about. Mm, right. Uh, what else would be a plant-based protein? 
Well, nuts and seeds, right? Absolutely. High there. in vitamin E and fiber. Yep. Uh, soy, mm-hmm. which comes in a variety of forms. Um, the, the tofu is made from soy and edamame and tempeh. Tempeh, which is like a tofu, right? Mm-hmm. It's like a soy thing, yeah. Um, Miso soup. Yep. What's chili made out of? What's chili made out of? Mm-hmm. Or what's a black bean burrito? Oh, beans. Oh, I got you. I'm like thinking meat and sauce. And <laughs> so you're going for the beans. Yeah, beans, of course. I always right. forget about beans and protein, but yeah. Oh, they're... wow. It's a it's a big one, though. Like if you're vegetarian, you have got to get creative with bean dishes and chickpeas, lentils, black beans, the legumes. Yeah, for pulses. sure. Yeah. They're actually a key element in the anti-inflammatory diet. Okay. And remember we talked about blue zones where people around the world, so Okinawa is in Japan, and people live to a ripe old age in good health. And part of that is what they eat in terms of the beans. Oh, the beans, they're a big part of it, hey? Yeah, yeah. That's a common thread with a lot of the blue zone areas in the world where people live long and in good health. So more beans. Yes. More beans, less burgers. Well, that's, yeah, yeah, that's true. That's a good way to make, make beans, not burgers. (laughs) That's the bumper sticker. Okay. um, All right. So that was the second. So whole foods, plant-based proteins, omega-3 fatty acids is a very important part of an anti-inflammatory diet. And we get those from? A fish. Yeah. Is one. Yeah. What kind of fish? Salmon. Yep. Um, not bottom feeders, small fish. Um, we're playing charades here. <laughs> sardines, uh, sardines, mackerel. Those would be good yeah. ones. And the little canned fish, usually, right? Yeah, yeah, exactly. Remember? Uh, oh, actually, we talked about calcium last week, and not fiber. That was two weeks ago. But remember the absorbable calcium with the bones in the canned fish, the little. Oh, this that was canned salmon, right? Mm-hmm. Or yeah, sardines. You mush up the bone. Oh, and sardines too. Yeah, you mush up the bones and mackerel. All of those. Yeah, anchovies. Yeah, I, I don't know that I could sit and eat. I love anchovies, but I don't think it's sit and eat a can of anchovies. I mean, I sit and eat a can of sardines, but I can't imagine doing that with anchovies. I'm glad you sit, not stand. Well, it's better for you, right? <laughs> yeah. I'm just teasing. Um, okay, and then the other uh, olive oil and avocado have omega-3 fatty acids. Right. And the seeds like hemp seeds and chia seeds, ground flax seeds. Those all uh, offer some good omega-3s. Perfect. And the last one is fiber. Fiber. So that kind of bl- kind of ties in with the whole foods. but So whole grains, vegetables, fruits, legumes, and the fiber helps to fuel the bacteria in the gut. And it produces butrate acid, which is an anti-inflammatory fatty acid that protects it against heart disease. Oh, interesting. So it, eating those foods creates that acid that helps fight the inflammation. Yeah, it's in the gut. Wow, that's neat. Yeah. So you asked about the Nordic, um, like what do people in... I, yeah, I was curious just if there is a traditional kind of meal or, or cuisine up there in that yeah. part of the world. Yeah. I'm just well, not familiar with it. Some core foods that they would include... Um, <laughs> It's our dog. Our dog's with us sometimes. He's he's the one in the background making all the noise. He's so Just funny. In case you're thinking it was me. <laughs> um, wasa crackers, Rivita crackers. Do you remember those? Yeah. In a Nordic diet. Um, so so rye, cr- rye, whole rye products. Okay. Uh, muesli. Okay. That's whole grains. Uh, berries, apples, pears, fish, cabbage. Broccoli, sauerkraut, potatoes. So nothing, no, like like when you think of Chinese food or Mexican food or Italian, you think of certain dishes, but is there anything that stands out for Nordic that would be like their signature plate? Oh, I think of um, pickled herring. Oh, yeah. That I guess. usually comes from... Does their, it? Doesn't it? I don't know. Maybe. And, and definitely the wasa crackers and the rye, because they're actually, um, the rye has really... It's a grain that has been shown to help reduce blood sugars and the um, C-reactive protein that I talked about, the marker of inflammation, it actually helps bring that down. And it's also helpful for men with prostate cancer with that PSA. It actually helps with 
reducing the marker for prostate cancer. Okay, and that was right. Which is inf- inflammatory too. Like that's an inflammatory marker, the prostate-specific antigen, and it goes up uh, when someone, like when a man has um, or is in that pro-inflammatory state, and they might have it's indicating of prostate cancer. Okay, and so that was rye. You said that. Is yeah. Ha- is yeah, the rye made in um, the Nordic area of the world nordic rye <laughs> whole whole rye products so oh, in okay. in breads in crackers in muesli um etc so choosing to eat more of those anti-inflammatory foods that are from a traditional diet and lifestyle the whole foods the plant-based proteins the omega-3 fatty acids and fiber and eating less of the pro-inflammatory foods, which we talked about that uh, contribute to the inflammatory state, it will be helpful to optimize your overall health and reduce the chronic inflammation and also all those potential health risks. I'm going to give it a try. We'll see what happens. Well, yeah. And I mean, there's specific things you can start to do. Maybe include a little bit more turmeric or cucumin in your Uh, diet. In my my oatmeal? You could. Yeah. Uh, Yeah. Yeah. A little like oatmeal curry. Why not? Let's see what happens. Yeah, definitely. You can add it to your soups and stews and eggs or also just including another vegetable in your day that will help improve your whole foods yeah and like you i think said in one of, one of the other episodes if you're putting good things in your body then that takes away something bad that you're putting in your body yeah yeah, yeah well it or so I, th- I think it was we were talking about drinking pop if you're drinking pop then you're not drinking good things right so yeah it's like yeah if you're if doing you're more hard, sorry <laughs> having if, including more of the the anti-inflammatory foods that we talked about, the whole foods, and eating less of the ultra-processed, that would be a good way to... There, that's to that's the bottom line. Yes. Yeah. Okay, let's leave it at that. All right. Thanks, Sandra. Awesome. Thanks, Rob. We will uh, chat more next week. All right. All right. Cheers. Make hummus, not war. <laughs> Thanks for joining us today on My Wife the Dietitian. If you like what you heard, don't be shy. Leave us a comment or review and be sure to share our podcast with your friends. If you'd like to hear more, hit that subscribe button. You can also follow us on our social media pages for updates, episode trailers, and other odds and ends. For more info and links on what we discussed on today's episode, check the show notes. We'll be back next week with another informative and fun-filled episode. Thank you.